Please welcome Deb Durantram. She's from Veterinary Clinical and Diagnostic Sciences, and her supervisor is Dr. Daniel Pang. Deb's 3MT talk title is Silence Speaks Volumes, How Rat Ultrasonic Communication Can Teach Us About Pain Perception. Do you remember the last time you hurt yourself? Maybe burnt your hand on a hot wood stove? What you experienced there was a stimulus traveling up a nerve to your spinal cord, causing a withdrawal reflex. The stimulus then traveled to your brain. Ow, that's when it became pain. But here's the thing, something else happened. Your brain processed this input and caused an emotion. Did you maybe curse because you were, you were mad you burnt yourself? Pain is inextricably linked to a negative emotion, and we see that most prominent in chronic pain sufferers. It seems very likely that those patients develop depression, anxiety, or sleep disorders. So when we test novel pain drugs in animals, it is really important that we not only measure the pain they experience, but also how they feel, their affective state. In my research, I use ultrasonic vocalizations from rats to determine how they feel. It has been shown that the frequency at which rats do that has a lot of um, information on how they feel. The word ultrasonic vocalization is derived from the fact that those calls are produced outside of the human hearing range, so you cannot hear it. But if I may draw your attention to my slide, on the top, you see a call from a happy rat, a rat that's involved in positive play with a human experimenter. On the bottom, again a call, frequency to time, of a rat that's suddenly startled with an air puff. This rat is not happy. When I learned this, I was incredibly fascinated by it, and I decided to, to spend my research on this. And I hypothesized that the frequency and the shape of the calls will be different depending how well pain alleviating drugs are working. With this, ultrasonic vocalizations, the recording and the analysis is non-invasive. It measures spontaneous behavior and I believe is therefore more representative of a human pain experience. And I'm also convinced that if we manage to implement recordings of ultrasonic vocalizations in rodents, in pain models, it will smoothen the path for novel pain drug discovery and therefore increase the quality of life of chronic pain sufferers. Thank you. <laughs>